All right, everybody, Lance Egan again with Fly Fish Food, and I want to show you a jigged streamer. Uh, you've probably seen lots of streamers that are tied on jig hooks or jig style. This particular one is uh, designed to do a, uh, to, or to be used, I suppose, on a European nymphing rig. I know it sounds weird, streamers on a nymphing rig, but uh, if you've seen our video Modern Nymphing Elevated, it goes quite in depth on that particular te technique, and uh, I think you'll find in, in a lot of situations that uh, a jig streamer or heavily weighted streamer on the Euro rig is a very, very effective way to fish. So with that in mind, I want to show you one of the most effective streamers I've found. This has got to be the simplest streamer I've ever tied, which I really like because I'm not afraid to lose them because they don't take me a half an hour to tie. Uh, I need to send some props to my friend Pat Weiss, who is the guy that showed me this pattern. Uh, again, it's not a crazy elaborate fly. It's really basic and really simple, but for whatever reason, the fish really, really like it. So. I've started with a uh, hook in the vise and a bead in, on the hook. I've got a Hannock Competition, the 400, which is my favorite jig style hook for most situations. Uh, this particular one's a size 10. I tie them as small as 12s and as big as 8s, uh, but most of the time I'm using them in about a size 10. And then I've got a silver bead in the hook. Um, silver is interesting because it's a contrasting color to the rest of this. We're going to do a black streamer. And for whatever reason, when I tie these with black nickel or jet black beads, they just don't work quite as well for me. So I really have grown to like the contrast of the bright silver bead with the black body. So anyway, uh, oh, one other thing of, of note, this because it's a jig hook, we've got a slotted bead, tungsten bead in the, in the, on the hook. And uh, it's a good idea to tie some of these in various color, or various sizes, colors as well actually, but various sizes. So in deep, fast water, you might need these with a 4.6 millimeter bead. Uh, in shallower situations, you might do better with a 3.3 millimeter bead or a 3.8 or a 4 millimeter bead, somewhere in there. Uh, most commonly, I'm tying them in a 3.8 or a 4 millimeter, and the 4.6s are my real heavy bombs, and the 3.3s three are for lighter situations. So adapt that based on your needs, uh, the depth and flow of your, your favorite river. All right, next up, we're going to use some UTC Ultra Thread and 140 denier. Uh, this is just black. And I'll start it right behind the bead, and we'll get it built up, and then get rid of the excess. We're going to rotate the thread back down to the bend, and I'm going to tie in a marabou tail. This is Fish Hunter Marabou in black UV. Regular black marabou will probably work well too. I don't know if this black UV actually has any real UV properties to it. When I shine a UV light on it, I can't see any, but uh, I have a lot of confidence in other products that have UV, so I figure if there's any hint of UV in there that the fish are picking up, this can't hurt. So black UV uh, marabou for the tail. We're going to tie this tail fairly long, just like we would on most of the streamers that uh, you've seen me tie, and so a lot of our guys tie for lakes especially, where we tie them quite long. I'm going to tie the butts of the feathers in here behind the bead. Just capture them with the hook and then like all these long-tailed flies we're going to tie down the bend a little ways to keep it from fouling as much again those don't look as cool in your in your box because the your friends are going to look at you and say you should have stopped tying your thread about you know you're tying your tail about where the thread is there which they're probably right for uh, a really perfectly tied fly but for a perfectly fishable fly this is going to foul a lot less so I'm going to wrap it down just a little further than you think, down the bend. And then I'm going to come in here with my fingers and make this maybe, it's probably almost two and a half times the length of the shank because we have a pretty short shank, but I like these tails pretty long. And I'm just going to break those fibers off with my thumbnail. I don't cut them, you could, but when you break the, the fibers, they end up with kind of a, a wedge you can almost see in, in there if I move my thumb. There you go. They break and you have a natural tapered end where if you cut them, they look really uh, blunt on the ends. And uh, the fish, again, probably don't care, but I like the look of the broken tips just a little bit better. All right, next up, we're going to add the chenille for the body. Chenille is medium polar chenille in black. Uh, medium size is important. If you get regular polar chenille, it's gonna be too big for this size of hook. So this black polar chenille is kind of a, I think it looks almost black and purplish, um, but this particular color is just deadly. 
So to keep it nice and consistent, I'm going to tie it in right behind the bead and then work it back to where my marabou tail starts. And then my bead rotated on me a little bit during the tying process, so I'm going to rotate it back. I'm going to put a few extra wraps to try and hold it in place here for just a second. There we go. And then I'm going to half hitch and use the bobbin cradle on the Renzetti Master. Next up, we're just going to wrap the chenille through the body. If you're uh, really, really OCD, you could probably take a wrap and stroke the fibers back, and then take a wrap and stroke the fibers back. I'm not that worried about it. So I just kind of wrap them until I get up here to the bead. And I'm going to do an extra couple of wraps right at the bead to kind of lock that bead in place. I've got a lot of tension. You can see I'm flexing the hook, so I'm wrapping it with a, enough tension that it wraps really tight. That makes for a durable fly. I'm going to capture the thread, sorry, capture the chenille with the thread. Tie it off. Get rid of the excess. And then you won't believe it. This is too easy, but now we're just going to whip finish. And like all flies, it's a good idea to add a little bit of head cement on the thread. Otherwise, that is the simplest of uh, streamers you'll ever tie. And uh, for me in particular, this last winter, I've probably caught more fish on this fly than I have any of the nymphs that I've thrown. It's just been deadly effective. Uh, nymphed and, and down deep in slower pools on a European nymphing leader. So give that a uh, little tiny streamer, it's pretty small as streamers go, it's very heavy and it's very very simple. But give that one a whirl and uh, get it low and slow and give it a little twitch now and then and I think you'll find the fish will love it.